So let me preface my answer to this question by first affirming that life is God's most precious gift in the universe. In fact, he created human beings to be the, the crown jewel of all his creation. We're the best and greatest thing that God has created. Not that there's anything inherently special or good about us um, on our own, but rather that we've been created in God's image. And so each life, each person is infinitely valuable. Life is infinitely valuable because it's been created in God's image, human life. But suicide, however, is a rejection of that truth. It's a denial that life is precious, that it is created in God's image. It's murder of the, the, the self, the destruction of God's image. And it's saying, in a sense, that I'm going to play the part of God and I'm going to decide when life ends. That's a decision that's left only to God and not to us. And if you are ever tempted to think that your life doesn't matter, or that you don't matter, or that your life is worthless, you need to fight those thoughts with this biblical truth that God has intimately and uniquely created you in his image, and you therefore have value. So the notion that your life has no value is a lie, and it's a lie from the pit of hell. You should not believe it. It is absolutely untrue. You are infinitely value, valuable because you've been created in God's image. But obviously, suicide is a serious sin. Uh, Jesus says that murder is a grievous sin. Uh, John says in 1 John 3.15 that murderers do not have eternal life within them. In fact, we just recently did an Ask Anything video on that verse that you can go and watch. So the question is, does this serious sin of suicide negate a person's salvation? Can a, Christian, can a person be a Christian and end up killing themselves? And what does that say about their eternal destiny? And I think we have to answer that although suicide is a very serious and, of course, obviously a very final sin, I don't think it is determinative of a person's ultimate salvation. In other words, a person who kills himself does not automatically go to hell because of the sin of suicide. Uh, to make this point, John Piper uses a very helpful analogy. He says, imagine that you and your spouse are arguing, and it's a it's a bitter, dragged down uh, argument, right? And you say something horribly sinful uh, to your spouse in this argument, and you storm out the door, and you slam the door as you're leaving the house, you get in your car, and you just start to drive. You're so angry, you're so irritated, all you can do is just drive. And because you're so sinfully angry in that moment, you're driving erratically, you're not taking your time, you know, changing lanes or going around the curves or whatever it might be. And anyway, you skid off the road and you hit a telephone pole at 60 miles an hour and you're killed instantly. And when you died, you were sinning in anger and in hatred. And it was actually that same anger that caused you to crash and caused your death. You didn't intend to kill yourself, but you did, and you died because of that sin. So the last thing you did in that scenario in your life was to sin. Does that count, cancel out your salvation? If you have that big sinful fight with your spouse, and you go off, and you're driving in anger, and you, you end up killing yourself, does that cancel your salvation? Or think of it like this. It is almost certain that when you die, no matter when or how you die, you will likely have some unconfessed, unrepented of sin in your heart. Does that sin send you to hell? Of course, we would say in both of those scenarios, the answer is no. It does not send you to hell. And the reason because it does, that it doesn't send you to hell is that Jesus died for all of your sins. Your past sins, present, and future. And not just certain types of sins either, but all sins. So the question then is this, can a Christian be so depressed and momentarily blinded to the hope of the gospel that he takes his life in a moment of despair? And I think the answer to that is yes. I think that's kind of what the big message of the Bible, the big picture of the Bible and the gospel is pointing us to, is that a Christian can commit suicide and that does not negate his salvation. Now, as I say that, though, again, I need to be very clear, that's not to make light of suicide, nor is it to make it permissible 
for anyone. It's still sin, and Christians should flee from all sin. Um, in fact, I think if you, the Bible also teaches, you know, if you if you engage in sin wantonly or or knowingly and even joyfully and say, I, I know this is a sin, I'm going to do it anyway. Then you have that's what should give you pause and concern about the state of your salvation. But in general, I think we can, we should say that suicide is not a sin that is stronger than God. It's not, it's not outside of the, the reach of God's grace. It's not an unforgivable sin that is untouchable by God's grace. So do not take your life for granted. It is God's greatest gift to you. And he made you to be like him. And it is a sin to destroy that life, to murder yourself. But that sin is not determinative of your final salvation. That's how great the gospel is. That's how amazing God's grace is and how, how far-reaching the forgiveness uh, brought by the gospel is as well.